Okay, so let's talk about The Amazing Spider-Man. I'll admit it's almost a little pointless to talk about it, seeing how this came out, like, was it July 2nd or 3rd? Um, and it's almost a week later. <laughs> Sorry about that. I mean, just bum reviews come out on Sundays usually, but I digress. Uh... As usual, the best way to talk about a movie that's part of kind of part of a franchise is talking about what you thought of the other ones. Uh, even though this is a reboot, people are constantly going to compare it to the original Spider-Man films. I might as well just quickly say what I thought of those. Uh, I like them okay, uh, but I always sort of acknowledge that they're silly, campy, even kind of dumb movies. Like... I do like them. I mean, don't get me wrong, but I guess when people were saying, like, oh, Spider-Man 2 is one of the best superhero movies ever and stuff, I was like, really? You know, and Spider-Man 1 is great. Really? Spider-Man 3 was too stupid. That was the one that was too stupid. <laughs> so, I mean, I, by the time the third one came around, I was just used to the stupid, so I just went along with it. Maybe that's why it doesn't bother me as much as other people. Uh, but I like them okay for just sort of silly, dumb, fun uh, you know, with some dramatic moments, I mean, give it some credit. Uh, but this was the one, when I heard they were going to make a Spider-Man movie, even when I heard Sam Raimi was going to do it, uh, this is sort of what I thought I was going to get. I thought I was going to get this really adult, more dark, more gritty, uh, suspenseful, dramatic movie. Uh, and that really is what this is, and I was really impressed by it. I'm so glad they finally went this angle, because, uh... Like I said, the Tobey Maguire one, ee, popcorn fun, but th that's really all it is. Um, and I'm really glad to see the really diving into making these characters, you know, relatable and likable. These are very likable characters. Uh, that kid, uh, what, what, the Garfield kid, whatever, I mean, that, I, I don't usually say, that kid's, that kid's a fucking star, okay? This kid is so likable, and he is so charismatic, but he's not, like... He's not like a Jonas brother or anything. He's not, like, you know, constructed or anything. He seems very believable, and he's uh, uh, very likable, and everything that he does, he's the uh, he's a little bit of the oddball, but not too far. He's pretty damn smart, but not too disgusting degrees, you know, where you can't believe it. You, you really buy it, and he really sells it. He does this great job. Uh, the girlfriend, uh, Gwen State, thank fucking God for this character and the way she's written and the way she's acted because, you know, man, these other Spider-Man movies, I mean, the women are just idiots. I mean, I guess the guys are kind of idiots too, but I mean, it really is just the, you know, they never get pepper spray, they never take some martial arts, and they never, I mean, they really just sit around kind of look cute. I mean, that's really about it. This girl is smart. Okay, I mean, like, there's a scene at the end, you know, it's like, uh, the lizard man, he's gonna go, he's gonna set off this bomb or something like that. She's like, okay, I'll work on antidote. And she, like, goes and does it. And there's another scene where, like, the lizard breaks in and he's looking for her and he finds her and goes, roar! She fucking gets, like, a hairspray can and, like, goes, zoom! Sets the fucker on fire! Just, thank you! Thank you, God! <laughs> I'm so sick of Spider-Man just going, I'll save you! Oh, in trouble again? What a shock! Whee! You know, and just, oh... God, thank you for making this chick actually have a personality and likable and... Oh, God, okay. Without giving away too much, I guess, like, I, um, the real reviews, I, I don't give away spoilers. Uh, but at the end, they're going to do something that seems very similar to what they did uh, in the first Spider-Man movie with, with the, the boyfriend-girlfriend. Uh, and, yes, I, I'm getting really pissed off. I'm like, you're not. You're fucking not. And then she just says one line. And literally, I mean, I just wanted to stand up and say, thank you, Jesus, God, smart characters. I was just, I'm sorry, I really fucking hated a lot of the characters in the, in the other Spider-Man movies because they were just some, they were just such doofuses. <laughs> and I think this movie's really going to show just the faults of those other films. And even though they are sort of just whatever, corny fun, I mean, it's like, for the people that were really like, you know, oh, this is real gut-wrenching drama and stuff like that. I mean, in all the Spider-Man movies, there's like maybe two. I, I think they were both in the second one, <laughs> you know, that were like really sort of heart-wrenching and stuff. But I mean, like, the actors in this movie really sell it. Uh, you know, and the Martin Sheen is great. Uh, Sally Field is great. Uh, you know, and the, the scientist playing the lizard is great. Um... So I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I really enjoyed the take uh, they were doing with this. I would have to say the one thing that I did sort of miss from it that the Spider-Man movies, the other ones, did have 
uh, is that there was sort of this sense of sort of like the... Uh, uh, the first couple of Superman movies, or, uh, or even the first Batman movies, that there was just sort of this size to it, and sort of this epic... Um, there was almost a simplicity to the story, uh, that this is just a very basic good versus evil, but then there's these little complications in there, too. So it's it's going a little beyond that, but when you get to the climax, you know, it's, you know, it's the showdown, and you want to see the showdown, and you're hyped for it. This didn't quite have that. Um... And I'm not saying that it didn't come close or that the action isn't fun. It is great action, uh, you know, and some great fight scenes and everything. But it's, that is something that the first one and uh, even bits of the second one did have that. They did have this simplicity to the story that you could follow okay. Uh, that was very comic bookish or very movie-ish. You know, like I said, when you get to the end, you really want to see that fight. Uh, with this one, with the villain, I mean, you don't really feel like... You know, yeah, go get him, Spider-Man. Go stop that evil. And maybe a lot of that does have to do with the villain. The villain is not... At first, they make him very interesting. Like, he's this very... You sort of feel sorry for him, and he, he seems kind of complex. But as soon as he starts turning into the monster, they don't really go that much into, is it a split personality? Is he crazy? What's his logic? I mean, it's very rushed. And I think that is a problem, because when you get to his big master plan, you're not entirely sure why he's doing it. I mean, he says, but you don't really see the progression to how he got there. Uh, or even if he got there, or if another part of his mind got there, a split personality. I mean, you don't really know. Um, I hope it's not our split personality, because that's they've been doing that a million times in these Spider-Man movies. Um, just make him bad. Or, I, I don't know, just something outside of a split personality. Uh, it just always seems to be you blame, whatever, the Green Goblin, or the arms, what's that, <laughs> in, in Spider-Man 2. Um, uh, you know, or Venom, and I digress again. Uh, so, I really, really enjoyed this film. I A lot of it uh, hinges sort of on the performance of the main characters, and they, they just do a great job. I mean, this was such good casting. And, uh, like I said, they're not... They're not saying sort of these cookie-cutter lines, and they're not just, you know, Peter is smart, so he's going to, you know, have the big glasses and go, derp, derp, I know all these equations, I know blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's like, he's really figuring shit out, and he's not a show-off, and he's not this big, wide-eyed, boy. I mean, he's, you really like this kid, you and you like this actor, and you like the girl, you like, uh, uh, you know, Martin Sheen, Sally Field, all those people. So, I was really, really impressed with this film, and I'm glad we finally got this movie. Now, I, I will make clear, I didn't read the Spider-Man comics that much. I read a little bit uh, growing up. I didn't see it with my brother, so I don't know how accurately it followed. He was the big Spider-Man uh, kid growing up. Uh, so, I don't know how closely it follows everything. But I, I was really impressed, just as a movie, what they did. Um, now, the one other thing you have to ask yourself, I was asking myself, sort of an advantage, disadvantage, is what if the other movies didn't come out? What if this was the first Spider-Man movie? Would it have played as well? Because uh, I'm thinking of the scene, because there are scenes that just are still part of the origin, like uh, Uncle Ben getting shot, and so I don't think I'm giving anything away with that. But when you get there, it's sort of like, oh, okay, well, they... this I don't want to say it seems rushed, but it doesn't seem as slow as the other one. I mean, the other one really sort of took its time. Uh... And I do sort of wonder if a lot of that just has to deal with the fact that, oh, we've seen this, we know what happens. Uh, so if you took the other Spider-Man movies out, would that see have been effective? That's sort of what I've been uh, trying to figure out. I think it still would have worked, but that would have been a little bit of an issue. And that is the one other problem I have, is that sometimes the editing in the film can be, a, not often, but it sometimes can be a tad rush. And scenes can just really fly by when, again, the other Spider-Man movies did sort of have that slowing down since, like, uh... A good example is when Peter Parker's telling Gwen Stacy, so you want to see what I can do? You want me to show you the city or something like that? And you think it's going to be this big romantic, you know, like, can you read my mind scene for Superman where he's swinging around with her and you're seeing the city and in 3D and IMAX, it'll look great. One swing, that's it. That that was your big romantic moment uh, involving web uh, swinging or whatever. Uh, so that kind of stuff I sort of miss. I almost would have liked some moments to be a little bit more movie-ish. Uh, you know, and maybe that's something that could have taken a few, you know, a little bit of advice from the other Spider-Mans. Uh, but again, I think that falls under the same category as just sort of that big grandness and, and that simplicity that we can all identify with. But everything else, 
uh, like I said, w- with the people, is very identifiable um, and very enjoyable. Uh, so my get the people who would not like this movie, uh, probably people that really like the original Spider-Man movies and think there's nothing else, or, you know, or like the really sort of over-the-top portrayals, you know, and sort of like the whatever, like the 60s comic books or something like that. I mean, this seems more sort of like the current, more current comic books, uh, you know, where they're sort of darker and edgier. Uh, and try, with the subject matter, try to be a little bit more realistic. Um, so I say uh, people that like that probably wouldn't like this one as much. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that, that that's sort of my take on it. Uh, you know, and one other thing I'll say before I sign off is that... Uh, some I remember, uh, uh, Brian Hines, he, he does the Last Angry Geek videos. Uh, of course, he's a big comic book guy, and he was saying his big problem with the original Spider-Man is that Spider-Man wasn't funny. You know, he's supposed to be funny in the comics, he's supposed to be funny in the movies, but well, why isn't he funny in the movies? And uh, he's funny here, and he's very enjoyable, and he creates this great personality. And it just reminded me a lot, actually, of when I saw Keaton as Batman. I just thought, I really like I want to see more of this guy. You know, it's like, he has these troubles, he tries to keep it internal, he's trying to keep it his own problem, you know, but stuff catches up, and you just, you really identify with his pain, and you really get in his skin, and he treats things in a very adult manner. Outside of putting a property of Peter Parker on the back of his camera, that was dumb! <laughs> that was the one dumb thing. I'm like, you're a genius, kid, why do you... I digress. Okay, so, um, I, I really enjoy this film. I think people who would enjoy it are people that want to see a darker, grittier, uh, uh, I don't want to say more likable, because maybe you like Tobey Maguire. Um, but certainly, uh, certainly sort of harsher, more, as da- like I said, as down to earth as the subject matter can get, you know, being a Spider-Man and all. So if you want to see a film like that, you'll probably like this. Uh, and, and there are some flaws, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, you know, with, with story and uh, one or two, you know, uh, character traits, like with the villain, but... Uh, I think people will really like it. I think a lot of that comes from the strength of the actors. Uh, and the, the directing is very good, too. So, guys, that's my two cents, and I'll talk to you later.